Greetings, friends. This is Steve Dupuy for the Bible News Prophecy Program with Dr. Bob Teal. Dr. Teal, not too long ago, the technology was developed to create lab-grown meat to replace hamburgers for human consumption. What's the latest on this type of technology? Well, actually, we're seeing an abomination that's much worse than this. <clears throat> Microsoft Network reported the following, quote, 16 lab-grown grains run world's first living computer in Switzerland. Swiss technology firm Final Spark has successfully launched neural platform, the world's first bioprocessing platform where human brain organoids, which are, quote, lab-grown miniaturized versions of organs, perform computational tasks instead of silicon chips. <laughs> and now they claim that this uses a million times less power than their silicon counterparts. And so they say that replacing silicon chips with bioprocessors could dramatically save energy. And so now they've got a computer brain that's supposed to be, there's now part human brain. Wow. To be able to run computers with a million times less energy has to result in a huge increase to the profit margin. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. You know, and the Bible warns in 1 Timothy 6, verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Anyway, don't be deceived about what they're doing. There are ethical ways to deal with energy that don't require blending living human brain tissue with electronics. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as being lovers of money, I want to talk about something that happened with Jesus. This is in Luke, Luke chapter 16, starting in verse 14. It says, now the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard what Jesus had to say, and they derided him. They talk, talked against him. And Jesus said to them, you are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what's highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. So yes, scientists who were putting together this abomination are actually highly esteemed. And as it says, by, in Romans uh, 1, verse 22, professing to be wise, they became fools. Are these verses telling us then that without God, we are simply fools? Pretty much. Now, the apostle Paul warned about those who didn't want to retain God in their knowledge, and that they'd become inventors of evil things. And you can read that in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 1, starting verse 28. And even as they did not want to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, evil-mindedness. Verse 30, proud boasters, inventors of evil things. And that's what's going on with this. Now, frontiers in artificial intelligence report about this breakthrough. And they said that uh, the neural uh, platform enables researchers to run experiments on organoids uh, for up to uh, 100 days. Uh, they're using this 24 seven with electrical stimulations. And that over the past three years, the neural platform was utilized with over a thousand brain organoids enabling a collection of more than 18 terabytes of data. And it says, furthermore, the infrastructure supports entirely remote use. Currently in 2024, the system is freely available for research purposes. And wow. numerous research groups have begun using it for their <clears throat> experiments. That's incredible. It's almost as if nothing will be withheld from them is coming true. How should Christians view the use of this technology? Well, it's an abomination. I'd like to read something from uh, a Protestant writer by the name of Michael Snyder. Wrote headlines. They are using lab-grown human brains that they have enslaved, called organoids, to run computers. Anyway, he mentions it was a company uh, from Switzerland I mentioned before called uh, Final Spark. It says they've constructed a bizarre hybrid biocomputer that combines lab-grown miniature human brains with conventional electronic circuits, it's supposed to save a lot of energy. He said, but the problem is the human brains keep wearing out and dying. 
So they have to grow new ones, replace them. And they use uh, stem cells in order to make these things. He says it sounds like something from a science fiction movie, but it's really happening now. Hmm. He says, but what about the lab-grown human brains that are enslaved to run the neural platform? Each of these is composed of about 10,000 living neurons, and they are kept alive by microfluid system, which supplies water and nutrients to the cells. And instead of merely integrating biological concepts into it, they're actually using human brain cells wow. they make. Anyway, he wrote, during their short lives, the many brains are literally trained to perform certain tasks using a reward and punishment system. The enslaved many brains do what they're supposed to do. They're rewarded with lots of pleasure. But if they don't do what they're supposed to do, they get hit with lots of irregular electrical activity. <laughs> That's insane. It's as if these scientists are trying to create man in their own image and likeness with a little help from Satan. Please continue. Well, Michael Snyder also said, in other words, these human brains are tortured until they learn to obey. He says wow. that should make us all sick. What these scientists are doing is so incredibly evil that they think this is a great thing, but the brains keep dying. <laughs> so basically the organoids are worked to death. They're hooked up to electrodes and worked until they can work no more. He says creating miniature human brains and using them to power a computer may be a way to save a lot of energy, but shows how far our society has fallen. We are crossing lines that should never be crossed. Eventually, we'll pay a very great price for the crimes that our scientists are uh, committing, end quote. Is the rest of the world okay with this? Pretty much, yes. Wow. Yeah, the abomination is wrong on so many fronts. I want to read something that God said that he had the prophet Ezekiel record. This is from Ezekiel 9, verse 4. Go through the midst of the city through the midst of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry for all the abominations that are done within it. And this brain electronic merging is not the only abomination we've been seeing involving human tissues. You know, over a decade ago, I warned about monkey human experimentation. Mm. And they're making these Frankenstein monster type things in the lab. And then uh, we actually did a video called half human, half pig. What's the difference? Because they're putting human cells with pigs. Hmm. Now we're seeing human brains merge electronics. Now back in 1960, the term cyborg was co coined by Manfred uh, Klein and Nathan uh, Klein, related to be a being that's both organic and bio um, mechatronic. But what, so what they're doing now is kind of a type of cyborg. Anyway, thinking cyborgs actually reminded me of something called The Borg. It was in a show called uh, uh, Star Trek, The Next Generation. And the, the Borgs are basically an alien group. Uh, they're a type of uh, cyborg organism. They have a mind called the collective, and it's all, all hooked in together. So the mm -hmm. Borg were human-like things, but with this part of their brain that was different. And their goal, ultimate goal, by the way, was quote, achieving perfection. Uh, they, Borgs or cyborgs, having the outward appearance of showing both mechanical and biological body parts. Well, you know, it would seem as if the Borg's goal of achieving perfection is the right thing to do. But is this the right way to go about it? No. You know, Jesus said we're supposed to be perfect as his Father in heaven is perfect in the Sermon of the Mount. But instead we're seeing an enslaved cyborg now being developed to run computers. Now look, I don't have any problem if they have electronics can help somebody who's paralyzed or make their brain work functional, particularly if they've got uh, brain issues. Okay, that's one thing. But that's not what they're talking about doing here. Um, they're basically, as Michael Snyder put it, they're enslaving cells until they work them to death. You know, those of us who believe the Bible shouldn't be surprised that humans are going the wrong way with a lot of aspects of genetic research. And I want to read about some things that the Bible warns. Now, you alluded to this, but you didn't quote it directly. This is from Genesis chapter 11, verse 6. And the Lord said, 
Indeed, the people are one and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. So this happened at the Tower of Babel. This is why we have multiple languages. And this slowed down uh, human progress, which is not mm -hmm. always progress. Okay? But increase in knowledge was prophesied. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, we read, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many will run to and fro and knowledge will be increased. Look, with jet airplanes, you people can go to and fro, including myself, I did it a lot, and knowledge can be increased. And things such as properly sharing data on the internet, for example, actually helps with, with that. So that's a, a prophecy that knowledge would be increased. On the other hand, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting in verse 1, I want to read something from the Apostle Paul, okay. a warning, a prophecy. He writes, but know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, certainly taking other cells, human cells, in doing mm -hmm. this. They're not doing it to help those cells. <laughs> they love them, their money or prestige, the boast to be proud about their so-called scientific accomplishments. But a lot of people think what they're doing is so good and they're so wise. Yet in verse 5 of 2 Timothy 3, Paul warns that they ha they're having a form of godliness, but they deny its power. They don't think it comes from God. They think they're just so smart and all this. The Bible then says, to imitate them? No. It says, and from such people, turn away. Dr. Thiel, are you suggesting that we are now in the last days? Yes. Early Christians believed that God had a plan that uh, the world would be here for 6,000 years before Jesus would return. And if that's accurate, then 6,000 years is pretty close to being up. Okay. And therefore, yes, uh, we're in the last days. And well, we're seeing things that are consistent with last day's prophecies. You know, how much love do sciences have for this interspliced uh, human animal stuff that they're making or human electronic brain stuff that they're sometimes creating? Right. These, these are brutal experiments. They destroy most of them. And we find out that this is how they've been. Now, I'm going to quote Romans 1 again, but this time I want to use uh, the uh, uh, old King James. Romans 1, verse 28. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Verse 31. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection. And getting back to 2 Timothy 3, also from the old King James. This know also that in the last days men shall be, quote, without natural affection. Those who wish to use human brain cells to do this type of work lack natural affection. This is going in the wrong direction. We need to turn away from such things. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, in Proverbs 14, verse 12, warns, for there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Blending human Monkey DNA, as well as human brains with electronics this way, is simply not right. But we're seeing these abominable things in these last days, and they should be denounced. Thank you, Dr. Teal. For more interviews with Dr. Teal, in addition to written as well as audio articles, visit our website at BibleNewsProphecy.net. This is Steve Dupuy for the Bible News Prophecy Program.